Back in 2010, FedEx ran a Super Bowl commercial that I can still remember many years later. It was about this guy who had apparently escaped being stranded on a deserted island all by himself for five years. But the whole time he had this FedEx package that he swore to himself he would deliver to its rightful owner. And so the moment came. He, he rang the doorbell of this beautiful suburban home. A, a woman answered. He said, I've kept this package for five years and, and now I'm here to deliver to you. And she says, wow, thank you. Before he turns and walks down the sidewalk, he asks, hey, can I ask what, what's inside the box? <laughs> you know what's coming? She opens it up and says, oh, not much. Just a satellite phone <laughs> and a GPS locator and a water purifier and a pack of seeds. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> End of commercial. <laughs> yeah, it's one of my favorite Super Bowl commercials. And uh, the concept actually makes me think of this book. Um, the Bible contains the things that we truly need in life. And yet for a lot of us, this book is kind of near us or in our pockets or on our bookshelves or coffee tables or in our churches. But for some of us, it's difficult to open, to explore, and to make full use of. That's why I'm so excited that you're watching this video. Maybe you're brand new to reading the Bible and you're just kind of learning where to start. In previous videos, I've been kind of laying out a path, you know, find someone, start with Jesus, read the book of Acts, um, do the Old Testament Bible hack, read the book of Hebrews, because we really want you to enjoy all the life and forgiveness, grace and power that God has packed into this book. Which means we've come to our final step. And it's a big one. Our final step is read the Bible. <laughs> The whole thing, from this cover to that cover, cover to cover, I'm asking you to read the whole Bible. Now, let's be honest, this is a huge challenge. Um, there are many pages, many books, many chapters, what, 31,000 plus separate verses. This isn't something you could do in a day or a week. I did it one time in a month. And I was flying at a, <laughs> a thousand miles an hour and got nothing out of it. It's going to take you some time. And so I want to give you two paths that you can follow. Okay, two, two options. Option number one is you could read the entire Bible in one year. Okay, you'd have to read about three chapters a day, which would take you about 15 or 20 minutes. And you could be done with this whole book in one year. Uh, let me tell you the good and the bad part of that path. Um, the good part is that you're going to be done in a year. <laughs> One year from today, you could have read every word of the best-selling book in human history. The book that, that literally has changed human history. The book written about Jesus, what he did, and how that reconnects us to the love and presence of God. That's the good part. The bad part is that you're reading the whole Bible in, in just a year. And that means you're going to have to move pretty fast. Now, like if you were driving past, you know, some beautiful city and you were flying by on the interstate, it'd be hard to really enjoy it. If you were in like the Louvre, a, a famous museum, and you had to like jog and not walk and you couldn't pause and stand, that, that's a little bit about what it's like to read the whole Bible in the year. You're moving fast. And unless you have hours and hours of time to spend, there's a lot that you're going to miss. So you could do that. I've done that. Many people have done that. Read the Bible in a year, three chapters a day. Or, here's my second option for you. Um, you could read just one chapter a day. Here's the good part. Reading just one chapter a day, which is my personal habit, lets you slow down, stop, think, meditate, pray over, you know, the, the clock's not ticking, you're not rushing through it, so you can really enjoy some of the, the amazing things that God has said and the shockingly beautiful things that Jesus did. Now, the bad part of that process, if your math is right, it's going to take you about three years to get through the whole Bible. Three years is a significant challenge. Some of us can't make it to the gym for three weeks, <laughs> right? So you got to be honest about that. It's, it's going to be difficult. So that's why sometimes people choose the first path the first time through and then they slow down and enjoy the second path when they read this book cover to cover. Now, I'm not going to tell you exactly what to do. You probably know yourself. Can you stick with things for a long time? 
Make sure you're involving other people. Um, you can Google this. There's all kinds of, you know, really cool Bible plans that'll help you with the boxes to check, accountability, a lot of good tips I'm not going to get into today. But I, I do want to encourage you to read the entire Bible. And let me tell you why. There's a single passage near the end of the Bible in a letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to a young pastor named Timothy. And in talking about this book, the, the scriptures, here's what Paul says. All scripture is God-breathed. It's Paul's fancy way of saying, like, God breathed this out. This comes from the very heart of God. This is his breath, his word. This is the very word of God. All of the scripture is God-breathed. And, Paul continues, all scripture is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God, that's you and me, may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. I love that. Every good work, every good thing that God has planned for you, you can be thoroughly equipped for it if you know all the scripture that God breathed out. In time, you're going to find that you know where to go in this book when you're struggling with anxiety or a friend is stuck in depression. You're going to know the the passages and the perfect stories when you're having trouble forgiving yourself or having trouble forgiving another person. When someone is close to death, you're going to know to turn to this psalm where the Lord is called our good shepherd. When you're just trying to deal with life and a, a difficult boss, you're going to know this particular chapter where the Apostle Paul addressed that very issue. All the scripture is breathed out by God so you and I can be thoroughly equipped for every single good work. So we can do the things that don't just matter for a moment, but forever. So today I want to encourage you. I want to urge you. I want to challenge you. This might be one of the the harder things you've ever done. Read this book cover to cover. Take a year, take three years, whatever you want to do, but get to know the amazing God who breathed this out. Let me leave you with this. Uh, During World War II, um, you know that many of the European cities were destroyed by the constant bombing between the various people involved. Uh, One of the the main cities in Poland went through that very thing. Its main street was decimated by bombs that were dropped day after day after day after day. After the bombing was done, there was only one building that was kind of left standing on all of Main Street. It was the building that housed the local Bible society. It had been bombed too. Most of its walls had crumbled down. But there's one wall of the Bible society that remained standing. And on that wall was written something that Jesus had once said. Heaven and earth may pass away, but my words will never pass away. Stuff comes, stuff goes. God gives and he takes away. Your life, however long it lasts, will be exactly the same. But there's one thing that will never pass away. This. So read it. Get it. Enjoy it. God bless. Do you struggle to find time to connect with God? Well, click here to subscribe to our daily email. Well, we'll make sure that you hear about God's promises, his love, and his amazing word.